Hello everyone, Toby is here. Before I start this video, let me just say I am super happy, flattered and overwhelmed of the amount of positivity that I received from the first video. And I'm really glad that it helped so many people based on the feedback that I got, which makes me certain that this video should help even more people. So what I'm gonna cover in this video, the approach and the thoughts that should go into building your formation. We're gonna build the formation from scratch together. For this example, I will take on the Frontline Dragon Dwarf Formation. I'm sure everyone's seen it. There are many different variations of it but in this example I will give my own version of it in depth and in details and the reason behind each hero position and why it is meaningful to be in that position so let's go find a small camp to start building the formation this look like a nice place so the first thing we will do we will build up our soul side with three mechs very common there you go number one two and three the first hero I'm gonna position is yep for the following reasons. See, Yip is a sage, meaning he will benefit the surrounding units with the, all the sage research. Second reason is his tailwind is gonna help with the stalling, fairly common sense. And third reason is um, I equipped him with the banner artifacts, as you can see, and if you can go read the artifact, it massively buffs units defensively. Then I have the scarab, which is gonna give a mini shield, and then the harp is gonna give more evade and healing receive. And on top of all of that, I also chose Yip as the hero mastery of the command tier 8 which is also gonna help those three mechs second thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use one set of snipers in the stall side i like to do that for the following reasons they can really be the mvp of the fight without you even knowing it they could kill the enemy dragon second reason they actually attract enemy rufio sometimes which makes me happy because once i see rufio jumps on those snipers it means my power side snipers have free reign to do whatever they want to do the third reason is you can see them also getting mini shield from the scarab amulet all right after that next hero i'm gonna do is fairness you want to place this hero on the blue zone on the defensive side basically if you place him in the green zone he's actually gonna run forward start hacking in melee mode we don't want that because it defeats the purpose of this hero which summons wolves that stall the enemy and give you more time this might sound so like common sense but trust me i have seen fairness in the second line you don't want to do that in this case we're gonna put him in the corner to give fairness wolves more space to directly run from this side basically all right let's move on to the other side of the formation and start building this puzzle what i'm gonna do now i have these two checkpoints that i want to use my best two tanks to cover them so they don't collapse fast obviously it's gonna be bellrog it's the best tank out there and then i'm gonna use solaris here the reason i chose bellrog here i equipped him with the shield artifact which is gonna increase more damage received for the enemy and he also stuns give accuracy reduction he's just a nightmare to go through so I want him to protect my power side and then you can have your dragon basically here or here or here for me I prefer in the middle it just seems like the odds of him surviving when I go against power side is highest here uh, next I will use Denji behind Barrow because I want to give him a path where he sometimes flank the enemy back line especially if you tag if you tag somebody he can like wiggle his way all the way to the back line and guys if you see Denji goes to the back line ignore any plans you have and use his ultimate you will not regret this guy guy shreds if he reached there all right so since we are building our power side let's place some snipers place one here and one here and let's place another one here so the reason I'm not placing the snipers in front because I need to make a, an empty row to give them buffs with the hero that I'm gonna place now since we are continuing to build the power side we want everything that damage to cut through so I'm gonna use Jax Jax is really excels when he's in the corner especially if you activate spray he can stay I'm sure you've came into this scenario where Jack is in the corner and he's praying and he solo wins you the fight because he's all the way in the corner in this case that's our corner as we explained i cannot move those snipers so i'm gonna keep him here now if we want to focus on breaching this side who else is better than the one and only nora herself we're gonna place her next to jack and you can see i equipped her with the gun it's gonna give more damage to the melee units and um, the hat is mainly not for the shield but for the 10% damage crits and so on and the sapiel artifact to give morale and immunity and buff for the surrounding snipers as well so we're gonna place her here and as I continue building this formation you'll understand why I place her here not here and so on the reason is I'm gonna place next to her directly the hero is gonna be is Flora mainly for the blessing see Flora's blessing is affected by the distance between her and the hero that she's blessing so this is the closest as it gets basically Flora blessing is gonna be on Nora and you can also see I equipped her with this trinket which is gonna 
gonna give her life steal for the range unit, uh, the snipers. We can see the animation on them. Second thing is for this uh, harp, the second trinket, the requiem ability. If you go nine out of nine, it gives five percent healing. And if you only add this one, which is gonna make it ten out of nine, it's gonna jump all the way to ten percent healing. So I think that's a sleeper OP that people don't know about. Maybe. All right. So we're gonna continue since we have Flora here, blessing Nora. I am forced to use Avalon in this spot to buff Nora. If you move him one tile away, Nora is gonna lose the horn buff. So I'm gonna have to, I'm forced to use it here. You see she's going crazy now. I have him equipped with um, Claymore, which is gonna give higher morale boost for the surrounding snipers. Also along with the totem, which is gonna cover those snipers and so on. Next hero I'm gonna use is gonna be, see typically people what they do, or most people, they would use their fifth set of snipers here, right? I'm sure you have seen that. Coming to think of Flora's buff, I can cover one more hero if I do this. So who, who do I have is considered an important hero? Of course, you guessed it, it's gonna be Ophidia. So you see the flower animation on her, so she's affected by the buff now. Beautiful slowly the puzzle is coming together so what do I have here now I remember the dragon is here so I'm gonna position next to the dragon one of our tanks is gonna be Virian you can see Virian items he has the dragon set which is gonna give healing to hopefully it affects the dragon I'm assuming and then we have these two trinkets gonna reduce the evade of the enemy since I'm trying to breach and the shell artifact is gonna help producing enemy HP and so on and this one also gives shield I think if he gets hit and so on. So behind him, I'm gonna place Bazarit. And the reason is his bats increase damage received for the enemy. So it's only logical since I'm trying to push on this side. And then we have here the second tank is gonna be Gafgar. And the reason is because of the new flute artifact, which is gonna reduce the damage of this area in front of him. If I just have anything that could threat my dragon, hopefully it would reduce that damage from them. And behind him, I'm gonna place Rufio. See, Rufio I like to place him in the middle where I have the flexibility of leaping to this side or this side and so on. I faced so many people before where they, for example, they have their roof view here. And what happens is they, if they are facing my stall side, they are forced to leap on this side, which makes me happy. But you want the options of leaping wherever you want where you think you need to control the threat basically so for me i think this is a perfect position for him what do we have we're almost there now of course tiktok uh, i'm sorry buddy but this is the only position for you based on your size so we have very little tiles left now you can see these three snipers are affected by flora's uh, trinket give life steal so i'm gonna place grims here to give these two as well along with this claymore on this side which is gonna give him higher morale boost for these snipers and I gave him the shield trinket from last void stage to help him survive a little bit more. All right, what else we have? Now, since this side is a moral immune from the sapiel, I'm gonna use Elena here, this side, to give moral immunity for these snipers with the gear I gave her. So you can see I gave her uh, the dragon set, which is gonna give uh, moral immunity along that she has the Solantris, so she's gonna be safe here. Also, this trinket gives them damage mitigation to the surrounding units, so she's gonna work as a utility for this side then to continue you have very little slots left so gun is an important one so you want gun somewhere closer to the front lines for example here or here for me it seems here he's safer so you can have enough range to uh, use earthquake on enemy uh, power side or you know you want to have the reach basically and see i equipped him with uh, also a similar trinket for uh, variant just in case he gets hits he gives more shields and this trinket also gives uh, mitigation and the hourglass is very important for this hero and the reason is it gives the ability to slow as well which serves same as the earthquake so you know go back and forth which one you want to use but most importantly it gives him crowd control immunity at the start and in most of the fights that i do is gun usually either i earthquake or tag and just in case my grims is stunned for whatever reason sometimes the enemy dragon get procs at the start and i cannot even tag it because everything is stunned i cannot use the tag from the cape artifact of grims i equipped him with the tag staff along with the hourglass artifact that's gonna give him immunity of CC at the beginning so I have the ability to either tag at the beginning if Gribs is stunned or I have the ability to earthquake so that's my logic behind hoping him with this gear and I use this tomb because actually I'm gonna gain more of the stats that I want from trinkets than the tomb so that's why that's why I do it that way so going back I have three slots left I personally don't use Valari or Avril even though Avril does amazing I don't use her and the reason is 
is even Cleo because I really have very low major research. I'm not gonna invest a tile for her or abilities cooldown for her if I'm not gonna get enough in return. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use Roxas here. I equipped him with, let's see what I have on him. So he has the Seraph ring, which is gonna give attack damage to surrounding snipers. And I like to play Roxas in the defensive style, which is buffing my own units instead of stunning the enemy units. And that's just my play style. Cause I feel like if I'm gonna use him offensively, I have to move him to the front line and then equip him with the Clash of Fate set, which is gonna make him really vulnerable of dying quickly. And I prefer to use him as a utility. And you can see also the Stone of Origin to heal my dragon. And this set will give him immunity from dying for four seconds, I think, if his health drops down. And so yeah, I want him in this position so you can have reach to use lanterns on this side. I have two slots left. I'm gonna use more tanky for this area. It's gonna be Bane. And for the last slot, I'm sorry, Saizo, but that's the only slot left for you. So there you have it. That is how I build a formation. And here you have it. That's the kind of logic you should follow to maximize the potential of your formation. And by all means, this does not mean that this is the best formation out there. Don't quote me on this. However, this is the best frontline dragon formation for my account. You see? So so um, that is the purpose of this video. I want people to build their formation based on their account, not just copy others. Understanding your account and formation in and out will help you to react faster in PvP and which will ultimately make you a better player. Basically for me, in my opinion, that is the art in Art of Conquest. And uh, you can use the same logic of building a formation for any race, any type of formation. You can have a back dragon formation if you want and so on, but following the same logic of every hero you can see if we go back i cannot really change any hero position and that's the idea and you can see i put the formation back together without even seeing it because every hero has a meaning to be on that position specifically so actually let's take a look at the recent fight i had with the same formation and i'm not trying to show that i am better or worse that's not the purpose but i want to show that how i work this formation how it saves me so we can see here for example let's take this last fight i faced stall side by the way i'm more favored when i face stall side you will see me cutting through stall side like no tomorrow and if i face stall side there's a big chance that i lose so here we have it i use lanterns at the beginning because he has a azure dragon it's not gonna stun my uh, units so then i use the uh, earthquake you can see me i've already cut the through the soul side at this stage i felt like i already won so might as well just tag the dragon and then just for safety measures roof few leap on his snipers repair just for extra safety measures and there you have it it's over from the beginning so yeah guys this should do it for this video uh, hopefully you can use the same uh, logic in building your formations. I'm not the type of person to do this, but I don't like to ask people to press the like or subscribe or so whatsoever. But uh, in order for this channel to stand on its feet, sadly, that's the way it works. It is what it is. So give me the thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, until next time.